What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live stream from the Scalar Learning Channel. Sorry for the late notice on this one, but what we're doing today is we are continuing. Hey, what's up, Baran? What's up, Brian? Uh, we are continuing this series, the 20 day countdown going up to uh, the SAT. Uh, we're going to be doing one every day for the next now 19 days. And we're just going to be blazing through the original College Board practice test 1 through 10. I know 2 and 4 have been removed from Khan Academy, but I still think they're good tests. I still think, I, from, from what I've seen, they still seem fairly representative, so we're still going to be hitting those. A uh, little bit of news on my side, just FYA, oh, what's up, Yazan? I actually did switch it up and get a new computer because I was having some, some issues and some streaming issues uh, in terms of things being a little glitchy and a little laggy. So I'm really hoping, hey, what's up, uh, Adham? Uh, yo, thank you so much. I'm really hoping that the stream is really good today. So I want to hear your feedback. Let me know. Hey, what's up, Rochelle? Let me know that this is a, a good quality stream. Hey, Chris, uh, I, I am also in the process of trying to upgrade my Wi-Fi right now. That service is not available in my area, so I'm sorting that out. And I I'm potentially might be moving at the end of September, so uh, I'm going to set all that stuff up uh, for that. What's up, Kashal? Welcome, welcome. All right, so today uh, we are hitting up this this uh, practice test number one, the calculator section. I got the timer already queued up for 55 minutes. And we got a calculator here because it is the calculator section. Let me close this as well. Okay. And I think we are good to go. Maybe I should. The stream is good? Okay, good. Excellent. That's what I want to hear. Let me maybe close this zoom here to make sure we got the maximum amount of bandwidth. Everything else looks good. Okay, and I also want to check the audio, hopefully. And we're just going to be blazing through the original College Board practice test Ooh. 1 through 10. I know 2 and 4. My, uh, it so looks like the, the audio. yeah, there we go. Okay, so everything's looking good. I'm feeling excited. Yeah, it looks like the stream quality is very high in terms of the the uh, signal, bandwidth, everything good to go. And this is that, that new iMac that I've been wanting to get for so long. It looks so good. I'm so excited to do my first test on here. So welcome to this first stream. Here we go. Now, usually I'm taking this for the first time, uh, which I have taken these before, but it's been a while, so it'll still sort of feel fresh. Taking it in real time so you can see how I can adapt and shift within those time circumstances so you can try and apply those same tactics yourself. And I will answer questions at the end, but while I'm in the mix, I'm going to be focused and trying to get through this uh, as efficiently as possible. Here we go. We're going to start in three. Let me make sure we got this queued up. Boom. Two. And one. Let's do it. There we go. John runs at different speeds as part of his training program. The graph shows his target heart rate at different times during his workout. On which interval is the target heart rate strictly increasing, then strictly decreasing? Okay, so it's going straight up and straight down. Uh, zero and 30, nope, because it flatlines there. 40 and 60, yep, straight up, then straight down. Boom, done. 50 and 65 just for fun, nope. Cut, wait, yeah, 50 to 65 is decreasing then increasing and also flat all well, kind of yeah but we want increasing then decreasing right yep all right we're good to go number two if y equals kx where k is a constant y equals 24 when x equals 6 aka i'm going to plug it in um divide both sides by 6 and i got my value of k k equals 4. uh what is the value of y when x equals 5 so then it's y equals k is now 4 y they're saying x is 5 4 times 5 is 20. Let's just make sure that makes sense. 24, 6. So K is 4 times 5 is 20. Boom. Done. Numero trace. Uh, in the figure above, lines L and M are parallel lines. L and M. Let's notate that. I always like to do that, even though it might be obvious to you, but I like to do that. And S and T are parallel. Boom, boom. The double marks. If the measure of 1 is 35... What is the measure of two? Okay, let's do it like this. Measure of one is 35. Measure of this guy is 35 because these are corresponding angles along the transversal. This one is 35 because again, they're corresponding and that means two is, supplement, supple, um, two is a supplement to 35, which means two is 180 minus 35, which is 145. And it looks like 145. These are all less than 90, so those are clearly don't look right. Can't always rely on looks, but pretty clear there. If 16 plus 4x 
is, that's an equal sign, 10 more than 14. See how I'm immediately translating it to an equation? I find that that, that is really beneficial. Even if, even if you don't exactly know where the question is going, I love to do that, and it, it nine times out of 10, that works out to my benefit. What is the value of 8x? So watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm not gonna solve for x, I'm gonna solve for 8x. So first, that becomes 24 equals 16 plus 4x, and I'm gonna subtract 16 from both sides, and I get 4x equals eight, then I'm gonna multiply both sides by two because this is gonna give me eight x equals 16, and that's pretty good because eight x equals 16, that's what we're trying to find. Now, we can verify x is supposed to be two, right? Um, so if I plug in two up here, that would be eight plus 16 is 24. Yes, it does work, and we're good to go. Number five, which of the following graphs shows a strong negative association between D and T? So negative would be a negative slope like that. That's out, that's positive. You can see, I think it is A, but I'm gonna double check D. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, so this is a little bit more scattered. This kind of looks negative, but a strong negative association would be this one. It looks a little bit more like, you know, it's bunched together here. It's a bit more chaotic and, and spread out. Number six, one decagram equals 10 grams, 1,000 milligrams equals one gram. Hospital stores one type of medicine in two decagram containers. Okay, based on the information given in the box above, how many one milligram doses are there in one two decagram container? So a two decagram container would be 20 grams. And 20 grams would be 20,000 milligrams, right? Because one gram is 1,000, so multiply both by 20. So it should be 20,000. Let me just make sure I didn't, un didn't misunderstand that. There's in two decagram containers, so that's 20 grams. How many one milligram doses are there in one two decagram container? 20 grams, 20,000. Okay, I'm good. happy with that. Number seven, the number of rooftops with solar panels. Oops, let me close this. The number of rooftops with solar panel installations and five stages shown in the graph above. The total number of installations is 27,500. Okay. What is an appropriate level for the vertical axis? So 27,500. So this is 9, 5, 6, 4, and 3.5. So I, I'm assuming these are all in the thousands. If I add them up, that's 9 plus 5 plus 6 is 20, 24, 27.5. So it's in the thousands. Okay, the reason why is because that would add up to, right, right 9,000 plus 5,000 plus 6,000, et cetera, et cetera, would give me that 27,500, so that makes a lot of sense. Okay, moving on to number eight. For what value of n is n minus, absolute value of n minus one plus one equal to zero? Again, converting it into an inequality. I mean, sorry, into an equation. Subtract one from both sides. I can already see this is gonna be problematic. Here's why. You can't get an absolute value to ever equal a negative. It's always gonna come out as positive. So I'm gonna say there's no such value as n. I'm just gonna double think about this a little bit more. Uh, again, in order for, yeah, and that, that makes sense, right? This value has to be negative one to add to one <clears throat> to get to zero, it's impossible. Number nine. Okay, the speed of sound of a sound wave in air depends on the air temperature. <clears throat> the formula above shows the relationship between, mm. <clears throat> Form whoa, 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 whoa now. The formula above shows the relationship between A, the speed of a sound wave in feet per second, and T, the air temperature in degrees. Got it. Which is volume expressed. Okay, so this is an isolating quantities question. Don't even, not gonna worry about trying to understand it. Just isolate T. So we would subtract 1,052 from both sides, and then we would divide by 1.08, and that equals T. And that's it. Let's just make sure. Not plus, that doesn't make sense. Okay, good. Number 10, uh, at which of the following temperatures will the speed of the sound wave be closest to 1,000 feet per second? At which of the following temperatures? So basically, I take that original equation and I plug it in 1,000 for A, I think is all I do. Hold on, let me just make sure I got this in my mind. A equals 1,000, here, let's write it down here. A equals 1,052 plus 1.08 T.
Okay. So they're saying 1,000 feet per second A is speed. 1,052 plus 1.08 T minus this from both sides. Boom, negative 52 equals 1.08 T. So I'm going to divide by 1.08. Divide by 1.08. Use my calculator for that. Negative 52 equals negative 48. Negative 48 is the closest. Boom. Okay, number 11. Which of the following numbers is not a solution to the inequality? All right, let's isolate and let's combine like terms. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides first. <clears throat> I'm going that way so I get a positive x just a little easier for me. That's how I like to do it. But you could have gone the other way as well. Now I'm going to add 3 to both sides. I get x is less than or equal to negative 2. Let's rewrite it this way. That's the way I prefer. It makes more sense to me. So x is less than or equal to negative 2. Anything that will be less than or equal to negative 2 is good to go. So that's good, that's good, that's good. This is the odd one out, which the following is not a solution. Now we can plug it in and double check. That would be negative 3 minus 8 is negative 8. On that side, negative 1 in there. Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. And that is true. Negative 8 is not greater than or equal to negative 7. Boom. <clears throat> Number of seeds in each of 12 apples. Based on the histogram above, <clears throat> excuse me, which of the following is close to the average number of seeds per apple, a.k.a. the arithmetic mean. All right, what do we do here? This is the frequency. We've got three apples with, sorry, this is the frequency, two apples with three seeds. So here's how I'm going uh, to do this. I, it, this is as if we have two threes, four fives, one six, two sevens, and three nines. There's my data, and I want the mean. All I got to do is add all this stuff up and divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Divide by 12. Let me just make sure. 2, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Good. Okay, so here on the calculator thing like this, you want to triple check your numbers because <laughs> that's the real place for mistakes. So watch what I'm going to do at the end. Okay. So I got two threes, four fives, yes, one six, yes, two sevens, yes, three nines, equals, and it's that, I said what, divided by 12, right? Uh-oh. Yeah, see, it's approximate. Closest, so that tells me it should be an approximation. Six is the winner, and we're done. <clears throat> Number 13, okay, a group of 10th grade students, I have to zoom out a little bit, a group of 10th grade students responded to a survey that asked which math course they were currently enrolled in. The, the survey, da survey data were broken down as shown. Which of the following categories accounts for 19% of all survey respondents? Okay, so let's do 19. What is 19% of 310? That is 58.9 or 59. And I see a 59 right here which is males taking geometry. That's it, I think. They don't have males taking algebra two, because that's kind of close, and that's it. All right, good. One, two, three, four. Okay, back on track with that. The table above lists the length of the nearest inch of a random sample of 21 brown bullhead fish. The outlier measure of 24 inches is an error. Of the mean, median, and range, which, of the following, which will change the most if it's removed? It's got to be the range because the range currently is 16 and 8 to 24, right? That's the range, the difference of the max and the min, and it's going to drop to 8. That's a drastic drop. Now, I don't care. The median's probably barely going to change. The mean will change. The mean does get affected by outliers, but it's not. no way it's going to change as much as that range. And no way they're all the same. Medium probably will barely change at all. Okay, that's 14. Okay, 15. 
Okay, so we get a graph. I always like to understand the graph well before I jump into the question. The graph above displays the total cost C in dollars of renting a boat for H hours. So it looks like at one hour it costs eight dollars, and there's a fixed cost, I guess, of five bucks. And then at two hours it's eleven. So it looks like the incremental cost per hour is three dollars, starting at five. Just period. Um, the C intercept is this value. They're saying, what does the C intercept represent? It's right here. It's that fixed cost of five dollars. The initial cost. Y intercept is always the initial cost. Never anything like that, right? Or initial something, initial value. Which of the following represents the relationship between H and C, aka an equation? Well, this is a linear equation, and I already said the y-intercept is 5, so it should be plus 5 out there like that. And then we need to have an appropriate slope. And it looks like it's this one because, remember I already said, it's changing $3 for every hour. The other way to think about it, now you might be tempted to choose 3 fourths. <clears throat> the reason why is you'd be like, oh, I'm going up 1, 2, 3 over 4. But we got to look at the, the markings here. I'm actually going up three on the C, but these markings constitutes just one. So it's really up three over one, which is a slope of three. 17, the complete graph of the function f is shown on the xy plane. For what value of x is the value of f of x at its minimum? For what value of f of, of x, excuse me, is it at its minimum? Minimum is right there, because they're just saying f of x, that's the y value, that's where it's the lowest. And what is the x value? It looks like it's at three, and we can verify by here, right? That's the scale. Oh, sorry, not three. Negative three, excuse me. Because that's one, zero, negative one, negative two, negative three. Yeah, and see, they even had that three. Could have tricked me if I wasn't careful. 18, in the xy plane, if 0, 0 is a solution to the system of inequalities above, which of the following relations between A and B must be true? Okay. Mm, let's see. Oh, well, they said 0, 0 is a solution. So as soon as I see that in the inequality problem, I'm going to plug it in. So 0 is less than 0, right? 0 for both, uh, plus A. That 0 just goes away and saying A is greater than 0. Okay, A is positive. Great. The other one, 0 is greater than 0 plus b. Get rid of that 0. This is saying b is less than 0. So b is negative, a is positive. Of course, a must be bigger than b. Because it's saying if that's positive, that's negative, it's always going to be bigger. This is not true. Um, this could be true, but this also may not be true. Because b could be like negative 5, a could be 2. Absolute values would not be this way. Uh, and this we have no idea. A food truck sells salads for six fifty each, and drinks. I always like to do this. Put it into a little grid. The food truck's revenue from selling a total of two hundred nine salads and drinks in one day was eight thirty six fifty. Um. Okay. Wait. Um, got it. Okay, so the number of salads plus the number of, I'm going to do lowercase d, drinks is 209. And my second equation is 650s. Mm, let's do a system. Let's do elimination. 650s plus 2d equals 836.50. Okay. This is a system of equations. Some people may want to use substitution. I like elimination whenever possible. And I need to solve for S. This is actually going to be a lot easier with elimination, in my opinion, because I just multiply the top by negative 2. I'll show you why. This becomes negative 2S <clears throat> minus 2D equals negative 418. Now look at this. These cancel out. How nice is that? 650S minus 2S is 450S. I'll just say 4.5s equals, now I'm going to use the calculator, 836.50 minus 418. Oh, look at that. 18.5. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 4.5. Oh, wait, yeah. 93. Salads equals 93. 
Let's just double check that. So we've got 93 salads. That means we've got 716, 116 drinks. So two, oops, two times 116 plus, I'll just put parentheses just in case, 93 times 650. 83, 8.36.50, and that's it. We're good to go. Number 20, Alma bought a laptop computer at a store that gave a 20% discount off its original price. The total amounts, okay, original price is X. Oh, wait, yeah, original price is X. They gave a 20% discount, which means you're multiplying by 0.8. <clears throat> that is a 20% discount because what you're paying is 80%. So that's why we'd say if I want to know at the price after a 20% discount, multiply by 0.8. The total amount she paid to the cashier was P dollars. So this equals P is what she paid, including an 8% sales tax. So then it's this plus 8%. So you might be like, oh, I multiply it by 0 0.08. Well, that would just be the sales tax. If I want to represent the total value, I throw a one on there. Now it's the value plus the sales tax, which is the volume represents the original price of the computer in terms of P. So here was my original price, which is X, right? The P is the value that she paid. So if I want to isolate this, I just divide both sides by 1.08 times 0.8. And there it is. So that is P over this guy. 21, the data on the table above were produced by sleep researchers studying the number of dreams people recall when, people recall when asked to record their dreams for one week. Group X consisted of 100 people who observed early bedtimes and group Y consisted of 100 people who observed later bedtimes. If a person has chosen at random from those who recalled at least one dream. So we're in this whole thing here. Actually, wait. What is the probability that the person belonged to group Y? So hold on. Okay. So I should add these up. I'm going to use my calculator just to be safe. 28 plus 57 plus plus 68. Double check the numbers. 28. Oh, I could have added these, but that's okay. 28, 57, 11, 68. And then the group Y is 11 plus 68, which is 79. So 79 out of 164. And that is C. Just make sure I didn't make a mistake. What's the probability of a person building group Y? Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, moving on to this. Ooh, we got to zoom out again. Oh, no, we can kind of fit it in here. The table above lists the annual budget in thousands of dollars for each of six different state programs in Kansas from 2007 to 2010. And we got agriculture, this, 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 and it looks like... The budget here for this, it kind of shows every year it looks like that one went up. Most of these are going up. Yeah. Which of the following best approximates the average rate of change in the annual budget for agriculture, natural resources, from 2008 to 2010? So it's from here to here. So first I need to know the difference, right? Minus three five eight divided by two. Why am I dividing it by two? Because that is per year, right? This is across two years, <clears throat> so it's changing by sixty four thousand six hundred ninety nine per year. Oh yeah, and this is in thousand, so that's really times a thousand. So it's about sixty five million per year. 
Yeah. 23 of the following, which program's ratio of its 2007 to 2010 budget is close to the human resources program's ratio? 2007 to 2010. So human resources first, 2007 to 2010. Five, nine, two, one, three, seven, nine. Right, it's this value to this value. I'm gonna just put it as a fraction or a decimal. 0. 0.6841. Okay. Then, um, let's see. Let's go from top to. Should I do all of this, or should I here? I'm just gonna approximate nine zero zero divided by four eight eight one hundred. So that's Pretty close, actually, 0. 0.766. This one is 2, 1, 6, 4, 6, 0, 7, 3, 0, 0, 8, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. I think it's going to be that one at top, uh, one, four, six, eight. Now, don't do this if you're tight on time. If you kind of already know, um, I'm just going to show you what they all are so you can kind of see one. It's definitely not this one, but three, eight. Let's just approximate 0. 0.8 to not eight. And this one is two, six, three. 400 divided by 464200. And that's 0. 0.567. 0. 0.567. So this is the one to get closest to, and it was definitely this, this one with the 0. 0.720, which is education. Good old education. All right. 24, which of the following is an equation of a circle in the xy plane with center 0, 4, and a radius uh, with an end point there? So first of all, my equation is x minus a, you got to know the circle equation. It comes up almost on every test. Plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And this, the h and the k are the center, so that's 0 and 4. So that just becomes x squared plus y minus 4. And it's minus, not plus. That's something that they like to test on. And what's the radius? Well, we got to figure that out. But at least I can eliminate this and this because it's supposed to be minus 4. Now it's one of these two. Okay, how do I get the length of the radius? Well, I got the center and I got an endpoint, so let's use the distance formula. Square root of the difference of the x's, so it's just 4 thirds minus 0, which is just 4 thirds squared, plus 5 minus 4, which is 1 squared. This becomes 16 ninths plus 1, which is 9 ninths. Let's get common denominators becomes 25 ninths. That's nice because that comes to a perfect square of 5 thirds. But remember, on this side, it's not just the radius. It's the radius squared. So we don't want the 5 thirds. We want that 25 ninths. And boom, we're done. Now, this is a uh, calculator. You could plug this in and double check, right? Do I get a, uh, I'm, but I'm positive this is right, but do I get something centered at 0, 4 with a radius of, of 5 thirds? You know, you can, you can check that. Um, that's it. Okay. The equation above expresses the approximate height in meters of a ball, t seconds after it's launched vertically from the ground with initial velocity of 25. After approximately how many seconds will the ball hit the ground, aka set h equal to 0? 4.9 t squared t. Factor out the t. You could also plug these in. Um, as well, but hold on. Let me just do it the classic way. Plus 25. Um, this is going to be zero, but this just means it starts at zero. And then I want to know what is going to make this value zero. So I set that equal to 4.9. Subtract 25 from both sides. And then I divide both sides by negative 4.9. It's going to be about 5. 
but let's do it anyways. Negatives cancel out. And I get a little more than five, so best answer. All right, we're probably getting to the five hardest questions right now, 26 through 30. Katerina is a botanist studying the production of pears by two types of pear trees. She knows that type A produce 20% more pears than type B. So if here is X, type A produces 1.2X, right? 20% more. Based on her observation, if type A produces 144, how many did type B produce? And that is X. And look, I got an equation I can solve and I can just isolate by dividing by 1.2. And x equals 120. 27, a square field measures 10 by 10 meters, 10 students each. Mark off a randomly selected region in the field. Each region is square and has side length of one meter. Um, okay, let's draw this out. So we have something like that. And then we have these little squares like this is 10 by 10. And then we have these little one by one squares. And there's 10 of them. Okay. So that's 10 meters out of obviously 100 here. They dig to a depth of five centimeters. The results are shown. Which of the following is a reasonable approximation uh, of the number of earthworms to a depth of five centimeters beneath the ground surface in the entire field? All right. So we've got our sample set here. Now look how spaced out these answer choices are, which means we don't have to get really specific. We can just sort of approximate. And I'm feeling like the average is around 140, something like that, right? Down as low as 107. Oh, that's kind of an outlier. Actually, maybe around 150. So 155, 150. And... This is 10 square meters, and there's really 100, right? So, um, oh, yeah, I could add all these up and then multiply by 10. Or I can say that the average is about 150 for 1. So we take that 150 for 1, and we multiply it by 100, and we get 15,000. And just to double check, let me just think about it for a second. Hmm. So we get 107, 1,500, and then that's supposed to be for 10. Yeah, okay, it's 15,000. <clears> Here we go, 28. If the system of inequalities, is, Y is greater than or equal to 2X plus 1, and that is graphing the XY plane, which quadrant contains no solutions? All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to graph this. Y is greater than or equal to, to the best of my ability. I mean, it's going to be approximation. So slope of 2x plus 1, so that's going to look like this, something like that, right? And it's going to be greater than that, but we'll come back to that. Oh, they're both greater. And the other one is y is greater than 1 half x minus 1. Now it's a slope like this, something like that. And we're trying to graph both, greater and greater than for both. Solution set would be all this. Has to be above both lines. So you can see the one that contains no solutions looks like it's going to be quadrant four. And that's it. Pretty straightforward. Um, and we can probably verify that. Wait, can I verify that? Let me think. If I put, if I put in a negative for x, like negative one, that would be, y would have to be greater than negative 1. And if I plug in negative 1 here, y would have to be greater than negative 1 and a half. Hold on. I'm trying to, I'm trying to prove that this is, oh, I did the wrong thing. Sorry, positive. Positive 1. So if I plug in 1 here, I get y is greater than 3. If I plug 1 in here, I get y is greater than negative one half. Wait a minute, I could, oh yeah, 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 exactly. So like I can never get it 
where we can have negatives being allowed for both, if that makes sense, like down here or something. Um, yeah, we're just we're just not going to get to that, that. That actually made it more confusing. So anyways, I think this plotting out idea and graphing it and then doing it to the best of your ability in terms of approximating that, that was the easiest. Okay, for a polynomial P of X, the value of P of 3 is negative 2. Which of the following must be true about P of X? This is just knowing polynomials and factors. All right, so... If I plug in three, I get negative two. It's this one, okay? Because this means, this is referring to x minus three. It's the remainder theorem. And these have nothing to do with three. I mean, the, the negative two is the, is the remainder. It's actually the value you get when you plug in three. Or it's, you could say it's straight up. Yeah, it's just the remainder is, is negative two. Nothing more than that, that's just understanding what that means and understand the remainder theorem. Okay, number 30, this is the last of the multiple choice and then everything should get a lot easier after this. Which of the following is an equivalent form of the equation of the graph shown in the xy plane above from which the coordinates of vertex A can be identified as constant? So first of all, they want vertex A coordinates to be identified as constants, which actually, this is probably D. I can almost say certainly it's D because these are intercept form and this is, I don't, I don't even know what that is, um, but now let's verify, wait, hold on. Yeah, let's just verify this is correct. Actually, I can just FOIL this and make sure it equals that. So it's x squared minus x minus x minus 2x plus 1 minus 16. That, of course, does equal negative 15. So it matches up, and that's it. They just want the vertex identified as constants. We're, we're good to go, vertex form. Okay, we got 20 minutes left. We're in a great position time-wise to knock out these final eight. <clears throat> 31, why can husk at least 12 dozen ears of corn per hour and at most 18 dozen corns per hour? Based on this, was a possible amount of time in hours that it could take Y to husk? 72 ears of corn. All right. Six hours, right? Because if he's doing 12 an hour, to do 72 would be six. At the max, it would be... Four hours, because four times 18 is 32. Uh, I mean, 72, excuse me. So anywhere from six to four. Mm, it could take five hours. Four, five, or six. Let's go with five. I mean, any of those will be valid, but... 32, the posted weight limit for a covered wooden bridge in Pennsylvania is 6,000 pounds. A delivery truck that's carrying X identical boxes, each weighing 14 pounds will pass over the bridge, right? This is the total weight of the boxes, 14 pounds per box times X is the number of boxes. If the combined weight of the empty delivery truck and its driver is 4,500 pounds, what is the maximum possible value for X that will keep the combined weight of the truck driver and boxes, this is the combined thing, below the posted weight limit, which is 6,000 pounds? Below, well, should be less than. Below the posted speed limit. Okay, 6,000. Subtract 4,500 from both sides. 14x is less than 1,500. Divide by 14. Divide by 14. And it's 107.14, so it should be 107. Because that's the max, right? So let's just double check. 107 times 14. That plus 4,500. Boom, that looks pretty good to me because one more box and it's gonna go over. Okay, number 33, number of portable media players sold worldwide. According to the line graph above, the number of portable media players sold in 2008, which is 100, is what fraction of those sold in 2011, which is 160. So it's uh, 100 over 160, but we have to put in um, lowest terms. That's a rule on the SAT. 10 sixteenths becomes 5 eighths, and we're good to go. 34, a local television station sells time slots for programs in 30-minute intervals. If the station operates 24 hours per day, every day of the week, what is the total number of 30-minute time slots the station can sell for Tuesday and Wednesday? Okay, let's see. 24 hours. Two. 
Tuesday and Wednesday. So that's two days. That's 48 hours. And it's in half hour slots. So it's so every hour we're getting two. So if it's a total of 48 hours times two, it's 96. Let me just double check that. So that's 48 for one day, two days. Yeah, 96. Okay, number 35. Here we go. A dairy farmer uses a storage silo that is in the shape of a right circular cylinder above. The volume of the silo is 72 pi. Remember, volume equals pi r squared times h for a cylinder. And this is at the front. You know, if you need those equations, it's there. You don't have to memorize this. The volume of the silo is 72 pi. What is the diameter? So... I'm going to plug in 72 pi for the volume, pi, and we need to solve for the radius and then get the diameter from the radius, and the height is 8. So let's divide both sides by pi, let's divide both sides by 8, and I get 9 equals r squared, therefore r equals 3, right? I'm taking the square root of both sides. If the radius is 3, the diameter is double that, which is 6. Okay, let me just make sure, 6 of pi r squared, that's 972, yes, radius is 3, diameter is 6. Done. 36 for what value of x is the function h above undefined, aka when are we square rooting a negative or when are we dividing by zero? That's when it's undefined here. We have no square root, so it's when that denominator is equal to zero. So let's set it all equal to zero. You can solve this one of two ways. You can solve it with substitution if you'd like and substitute y in for x minus 5 and then do it that way. Or you can just FOIL and simplify and, and all that. I am going to FOIL. Just keep it simple. So FOIL that. So that way we don't have to remember too many tricks and fancy things. So that becomes x minus 5x. Remember, I'm imagining x minus 5 times x minus 5 um, plus 25. Distribute, distribute, plus 4x minus 20, plus 4. Um, these all combine. That's negative 10x, and that's negative 6x, because plus 4x. And then 25 minus 20 is 5, plus 4 is 9. So that's x, that's x, minus 3, minus 3, because... That become that those two multiply positive nine add to negative six, so the that's it. The value is three makes it go to zero. Now let's double check. If I plug in three here, I get three minus five is negative two squared is four. Plus three minus five is negative two times four is negative eight plus four is that of course zeros out. So we verified it, and we're good to go. Question 37 and 38 refer to the following information. Jessica opened a bank account that earns 2% interest compounded annually. Her initial, excuse me, her initial deposit was 100, and she uses the expression this to find the value of the account after T years. What is the value of X? All right, this is basically compounded interest. So if she's making 2% compounded annually, what goes in here, you might think, is 0 0.02, but it's not. It's 1.02, and this is just understanding that formula. We want, when, it, when something's increasing for an exponential equation, that has to be bigger than 1. Now, we're talking about a percent increase. You take the percent, which is 0 0.02 or 2%, and you add it to 1, or if it, in percent terms, to 100. Because every year, you're having the value, 100% of it, plus another 2%. So x is 1.02, and you can... And like test that out like you know you can plug in one and you'll get 102 dollars after one year two you'll get whatever it is i think it should be like 104 point something um a little bit more than 104. okay next jessica's friend tyshawn hold on let me keep that i think we're gonna need this t power okay Jessica's friend Tyshawn found an account that earns 2.5% interest compounded annually, which means he's making 1.025 to the T. So this is Jessica, and this is Tyshawn. Um, Tyshawn made an additional positive of 100 in his account at the same time Jessica made hers. After 10 years, how much more money will Tyshawn have earned? Earned. 
than Jessica's initial deposit. Okay. Straight up calculator problem where plug in 10 for T and that's it and then subtract. So 100 times two to the 10th power equals one to one point. Don't round too much yet. Round at the end. I'm just gonna write it all down, just play it safe. And then this, um, I want Tyshawn's to subtract this. So what, I'm gonna just save a little time here. It will be 100 times 1.025. Make sure that number is correct to the 10th power. So we're gonna have all this minus what we had before. Kind of keeping it all together. And that's it, six dot, and they said round to the nearest cent. So it's $6.11. Now let's double check. What does Tyshawn make? 1.025 to the 10th power. And then again, times 100 is 128.00845. So this is right, right? It's like 121.90 to 128. 90. Yeah, so 610, but you see, you could be off. If you would have rounded and then subtracted, you'd be off a little bit. So I try to to never round, uh, or to round, you know, like to be really specific. And then they, you, they want you to round. Round at the end. Don't round in the middle, because I can throw off the answer. Okay, that's it. That's question 38. I'm going to just make sure I didn't miss any questions here. Okay, those all look good, good, good. Answered, answered, answered. And amazing. All right, so let's stop the clock. Now, of course, if this is the real deal, you would take that extra 10 minutes or 11 minutes or whatever it is and actually go through and review everything. But in this case, I'm not gonna do it, I'm just gonna go ahead and grade it and we'll see how it how it kind of pans out. All right, one second here. Let's see if I can get my answers. The mouse and the keyboard on this computer are just so nice. Like I really, <laughs> it's just fun. Okay, here we go, scoring this guy. Let's get the answers up here. Okay, get the good old red out. So we've got B, C, D, C, B, C, D, C. We've got D, D, C, D, 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 C, D. Then we've got A, B, A, C. Um, we've got 13 is C, C, A, C, C, T, A, C. 17 is B, A, B, D, B, A, B, D. 21 is C, B, B, A, C, B, B, A. 25 is D, B, C, C, D, B, C, C, 29 and 30 are D and D. Yes. All right. All those are good to go. Now we do the free response, which is any number between four and six inclusive. So I threw in five. It's all good. 107. Yes. Five eighths. Yes. Uh, 96. Excellent. Six, three. 1.02 and for the win, 611. All right, there we go, 100%, excellent. Let's take a look and let's see what you guys got for questions. I'll do my best to answer before I gotta roll out. Yo, you're welcome, Sama. 
Oh, maybe you're saying to Leighton. Leighton, thank you for that explanation. I love it when you guys help each other. It's amazing. It's such a great community on here uh, in terms of everybody prepping and, and sort of collaborating together. It depends on what school you're applying to, Baran, uh, whether or not it's, it's mandatory. Ishwar, what's up? Okay, let's see. 25 graphically. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you can, I get Like, that's what I, I said. You could you could plug it into your graphing calculator and see what it looks like. So you can definitely do that. Uh, that's that's totally an option. 27. Yeah, I mean, 27 is literally like, look, this, all these worms constitutes one-tenth of the entire field, right? So all you have to do is, add, if you want to, you can approach it differently than I did. You could have added up all these values and just multiplied that by 10 and you'd get your approximation. That also makes sense. Okay. And by the way, guys, if you did appreciate this video so far, please click that like button. It helps me out tremendously. Oh, you guys are speaking in Turkish. Turkçe um, biliyor. Merhaba and teşekkürler uh, for coming today. Um, wow, a lot of Turkish. So amazing. I love, I, I mean, I love Turkey. I, I spent a lot of time there. Um, a lot of time. Yeah, I did the no calculator section yesterday. Okay, so guys, check it out. That's it for today. What's up, Arnav? Uh, merhaba, merhaba. Uh, so anyways, thank you guys so much. I'm going to be doing one of these every day, and I'm going to try and get more, uh, really put out the, the, the time of these live streams much earlier. Obviously, I know that's better for everybody. Uh, today, I was just setting this up. I didn't know if I could pull it off, but I was able to pull it off this morning. And it's a lot easier for me to do live streams in the mornings because my voice isn't as tired because I got to... Um, yeah, I know you guys are asking for English. I, I'm going to try my best. I just got a super busy schedule, and I'm still trying to finish part four of my SAT critical concept video slides. I'm about halfway done with them. It's just taking a really long time, but it's going to be so dope. Last but not least, if you haven't checked out my Math Puzzles channel yet, make sure to click on search for Husefa Math Puzzles, or you can also see it on my main channel page here. And check that out. It's going to be a fun way to challenge your brain every day as you gear up for this SAT. I highly recommend it. And it's, it's just fun. You know, uh, I think I, I try and choose and pick math puzzles that I know my students like and enjoy. So it's a, it's a lot of fun stuff there. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for joining and I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.